Right now we're going to talk about uh, two reflection rules from concave mirrors. And so I want you to look at these two pictures that sort of express these rules. And what's actually interesting is we actually saw this type of reflection. Both of these instances happen in our ripple tank lab. Notice here that uh, the blue rays in both images are incident rays and the red rays are reflected rays. So let's look at this left one first. We have incident rays that are parallel to the principal axis and every single one of them when they reflect, they reflect through the focal point and then they di disperse. We saw this when we um, did the ripple tank lab and we had straight waves coming straight at the parabolic barrier and they all converged in a focal point before dispersing. Um, this is going to be our first reflection rule that when we're close to a parabolic mirror um, or a, a, a concave mirror in this particular case, um, incident rays that are, para, uh, that are parallel to the principal axis reflect and pass through the focal point. Over here, we have pretty much the opposite. We have incident rays that pass through the focal point, and when they reflect, they reflect parallel to the principal axis. We saw this in our ripple tank lab when we, after discovering the focal point, we placed our finger into the water at the focal point, therefore creating circular waves, waves that had rays that you drew in your ray diagram of exactly this. And when that reflected off of our parabolic barrier, we had straight waves leaving in this exact direction. So our second reflection rule is that incident rays which pass through the focal point on the way to the barrier reflect in such a way that they are parallel to the principal axis. And what's really great is that we can use these reflection rules to do our ray diagrams and find images. Um, so again, just saying we've seen this before. This is very similar looking to our Ripple Tank Lab. Um, and we also had a quiz question many moons ago, I'll do this in yellow, where about how a light bulb worked, right? We had this light bulb and we have a spherical mirror, a so a reflective surface, a source of light um, at the focal point. And so it created light rays uh, that reflected in such a way that they left the light bulb um, straight out uh, parallel to the principal axis. Now, of course, we didn't use some of those terms at the time, um, but we have seen this before. So we're just building off of the things that we've been doing. And we can use these two rays um, to find an image, and or sorry, these two rules to find an image. And remember, you only really need two rays to find an image. You could do more. Um, but it's nice to be able to have two very simple to use ones. Now, I'm doing this without a ruler, and when you do this, you would want to do it with a ruler. But for the sake of, of showing how to find an image located with two rays, this is my, my coffee mug, as you would recognize. And um, we can first um, pick a point. Step one is to pick a point on the top of, of the image. Um, that you're going to use as a reference point. You're going to draw all your rays from that point. So first let's do a ray that I'm doing my best here is parallel to the principal axis. How is that going to reflect? It's going to reflect back through the focal point. I didn't do a very good job with that. Okay, because I'm freehanding this right now. You get sort of the idea, I guess. Now we don't know where the image is because, well, we only have one ray, so I need two rays. And good thing I have two rules. So I will take another incident ray and I will go through the focal point and it reflects back um, parallel to the principal axis. And where those two intersect is the point on my coffee mug. Perfect. Um, 
and I can draw my coffee mug in. What's interesting you'll find based on its location is that my coffee mug is now upside down. And you say, why is it upside down and not this way, right? Why is it, why is it not right side up? Well, let's uh, think about that. If I then pick a point on the bottom of my coffee mug to do all of these rules with, notice what happens with a reflection from the bottom of my coffee mug. I can go along the principal axis. It passes through F. It, you know, comes back. So the bottom of my coffee mug is going to stay here. So that shows me that actually my coffee mug is upside down, but notice that you could use these two rules to find an image. Now, if you wanted a third uh, ray to confirm your image location, what would be very convenient is to use the location of C, which again, I'm not doing a very good job here. Um, but if you go through C, C, if it were to reflect off of a mirror here, C would be the normal also. So the incident ray and the reflected ray would be exactly the same. Um, however, we can't really use C here because a ray through C does not make it to the mirror. So another convenient ray to draw is to do one sort of to the vertex and use the principal axis as a normal and come back out this way to form my complete ray diagram. And that is how you find an image location on a concave mirror using two rays.